Recently, we have often heard, especially in the context of certain political propaganda, that Italy holds the richest and more extensive cultural heritage in the world, and that this heritage is or should be its oil. One thing is certain, the wealth of Italian cultural heritage lies not only on quality, but also on its widespread distribution. As regards archaeology, there are three hundreds of small archaeological areas, even where nobody would expect them to be, along the coast, through the countryside, or up among the mountains. But what is Italy really doing for this widespread and unknown oil? How much does it invest in the conservation and knowledge of minor realities? Does Italy really employ its competent professionals trained in its university? Today, we will talk about one of these small archaeological sites a local dimension, less known, but worthy of being considered both for the quality of the remains and because it is a witness of a prestigious history. We are located in the northeastern Italy, not fra far from Venice and even less from Padua, Padova, at the foot of the Euganian hills. Here there is... How can I turn it? Uh, with, uh, no. Thank you. Here there is a thermal basin among the largest in Europe known as Terme Eugane. The warm waters which naturally flow from the subsoil have healing properties uh, that are still very appreciated today. The fame of these waters dates back at least to the 7th century BC. Then, one of the steaming springs of the area became the site of a sanctuary, where the earthy water was drunk and exchanged for sacrifice of gratitude, such ex voto dedications to a male divinity of the waters. In Roman times, from the 2nd century BC, Terme Eugane district joined <coughs> the municipality of Patavium. The male divinity of the waters took the name of Aponus. Literary sources define the area Aquae Patavinae or Patavini Fontes. Archaeological sources from the 18th century tell of an intense population, expanding especially between the 1st century BC and 2nd AD, mainly based on the thermal resource with prestigious Otium villas, Villa and private and public spots, attested above all in the area now occupied by the town of Montegrotto Terme. Therefore, in 2005, the Superintendenza Territorial Office of the Ministry of Culture and the University of Padua developed a project to enhance the archaeology of the Terme Eugane, choosing Montegrotto Terme as a pilot area. The municipality became the third partner and the support of several financing institutions was found. The Acque Patavine project has as its final objective, the creation of the Terme Eugane Archaeological Park, a network park in which the archaeological areas uh, are clearly highlighted in the current urban fabric, well connected, accessible, understandable. So far, several intermediate targets have been reached. First of all, the preparation and the opening to the public of three archaeological areas. The public baths are settled along the main street of the town and the complex was in use between the end of the 1st century BC and 2nd AD. It holded at least three pools of different shapes, the hydraulic system with wheel and pipelines, a small theatre and other recreational buildings. 
The archaeological area of Via Neroniana preserved the remains of a rich villa from the beginning of the first century AD, excavated between 2001 and 12 by the University of Padua. This is a view of the remains at the end of excavation, at the end of which the area has been set up in order to recall the ancient organization of the building, composed of residen residential units and large gardens. The best preserved sector of the villa is protected by a permanent evocative cover in the original volumes and underneath it, the mosaic and wall fragments have been returned in this way to give the visitor the perception of the articulation of the interior spaces, even if on just two dimensions due to the absence of the high concert walls. This sector overlooks alone whose fence repeats the perimeter of the Roman villa. The third archaeological area is hypogeal and under an hotel. It keeps the remains of another thermal complex, maybe private, and close to the villa we have just talked about. Here, the visit is entrusted to lightning. In fact, different lightning scenarios are foreseen which highlight structural or functional parts of the complex to guide the visitor who otherwise would risk to misunderstand the structural palimpsest of the of lies ahead, which is at the level I and therefore difficult to perceive as a whole. The archaeological route is also suggested by several information boards that also indicate the other known but no longer visible archaeological areas. Those arriving by train at Montegrotto are welcomed by a small waiting room at the station, furnished to illustrate the archaeological heritage of the Terme Ugane. Since 2011, the website of the Aqua e Patavine project is online. It is designed to satisfy historical and archaeological curiosities. It has a new sec news section to advertise the planned activities and a virtual reality section with the reconstructions of the most impo important archaeological areas. The last stage that remains to be concluded is the Museum of the Thermalism. It will be housed in a historic building. With the, it will deal with Asian thermalism in general and the archaeology of the Terme Eugane in particular. It will be the entrance door and the landmark of the archaeological park. Even if the works are in progress, the three uh, archaeological areas are open to the visitors. So here we come to the topic of today. What solutions have been adopted for the management of this local reality, which is small if compared to the great Italian archaeological parks, Pompeii, Ercolano, Pestum, but nevertheless made with the investment of public funds. Uh, is the de identified approach economically sustainable? The adopted solution is defined by the Italian indirect management law. The ministry, owner of the properties, entrusts the management to an external entity chosen to, on the basis of a public tender. The size of the context, uh, with low or no profit provisions, did not allow investors to be attracted, and therefore we turned to cultural associations, no profit by definition. Here a paradox is generated. We choose volunteers, but professionals in the sector, who are asked to do their job, but without getting paid. The only alternative we have is to keep areas closed or to contact non-professional volunteers. The chosen cultural association is called LAPIS and manages the archaeological areas from 2015 until 2019. It deals with mm, vi visits for adults and schools, educational workshop with children, projects of schoolwork alternation in which students guide visitors, 
and other extraordinary events, such as performances of ancient and comp contemporary theater, dance, music, reenactments and themed dinners, and also a photographic exhibition. As the images continue to flow, we will, not, we will now talk about the most painful key, funds and sustainability. The cultural association has maintenance costs and in order to reach a balanced budget, it must request the payment of the services of opening, opening and guided visits. The raised money barely sus sustains the running costs. At the best, it generates a surplus to organize further events, but it is not enough to contribute to improvement of the archaeological areas, an improvement that would bring an advantage to those who manage. The revenues are around in order of hundreds of euros per year. Hundreds of euros, not millions. However, the system would be in some way balanced if public institutions provided at least regular maintenance with continuity and punctuality. In fact, in our case, the ministry take, takes care of the preservation of the remains and equipment. The municipality supplies with some mowing. Unfortunately, I speak of the ministry, the funds allocated to the maintenance of the minor archaeological areas decrease from year to year, and lately they are uh, financed every other year. We are talking of thousands of euros in two years, 10,000, 20,000, not millions. As you can see, so far the financial report is negative and the system is not sustainable from a financial point of view. A minimum of sustainability depends only on grants una tantum. Over the years, we have obtained some from the Veneto region, the local banking foundation, the Rotary Club, some private citizens. These funds are provided rarely for conservation and maintenance, often for outfitting and events. In the specific case of Montegrotto Terme, finally, there is a strangeness. On the one hand, the town has over uh, 240 uh, annual attendance of tourists, thermal tourists. On the other, the hotel um, implement individual profit policies and do not consider the cultural proposal outside the hotel as a plus to offer to the guests. In the future, the management scenario will be complicated by the opening of the muse museum, which for a series of obliged choices will be owned by the municipality. For this reason, we are working on the possibility of building a sort of single box external to the involved public institution at, and at the same dialoguing with them capable of managing museums and areas and becoming, among, among other things, the promoter of effective fundraising policies and project of sustainability. The solution is not simple, even considering the limited success of public-private foundations and the risks connected to the total privatization of cultural heritage. In the meantime, however, in everyday life, we feel the moral and professional obligation to give back the very special story of the Terme Ugane to the territory and to the public for affection, for stubbornness, and because we believe that promotion of the culture recommended by the Italian constitution, unique among all the democratic constitution in its magnificence, Clause 9, also goes through the knowledge of the small realities which represent the details that compose the overlook. Thank you very much.